What's going on guys? It's Troy Dan here. And today we've got NBA players who hate each other. When I think of NBA players who hate each other, I think of Draymond Green and the rest of his teammates. Haven't seen it go. The NBA's been getting heated. Bum. Whoa! Put somebody else on. He's trash. See, we can't guard nobody, man. Everybody in the NBA know that. I don't Who's care that? who you are. King, queen, princess. But you know what? We're going to fight. Well, I'm the king. My wife is the queen and my daughter is the princess. So we got all three covered. These are the NBA what? players who hate each other. And two players have beef over one of the most famous girls on the planet. Is that a thoughty? Ben Simmons used to be a different man. I mean, he actually played basketball and was actually good. Yeah, so he wasn't, wasn't videos, wouldn't believe it. rewarded with millions of dollars and millions of followers. He attracted a baddie, Kendall Jenner. Oh. These two started going everywhere together. So of course their relationship went viral. And at first, everything seemed all good. But one night changed everything. Those Kardashians, See, man. Ben hit up one of his NBA friends, Devin Booker. And they decided to go on a double date to one of the most popular restaurants in Hollywood. But this was the night Ben realized he just introduced his girl to his friend and she got stolen because Book knows a thing or two about good. They beef. had a four way? Not even a week later, Kendall told the world she dropped Ben faster than he could hit a jumper. What's happening with you and Devin Booker? Um, he's my boyfriend. Now these two started being seen on date nights and at sporting events. Wow. Kendall even started showing up to books games. I watch every game all my friends and family know that I like sit with my phone where, wherever I am. So with him knowing that Kendall would be watching when the Suns and 76ers faced off for the first time since the double day, Book showed both Ben and Kendall who daddy was. Listen, this, this is for any kids. If you decide to do this, if you decide to have a menage a trois, or whatever the French word is for four, be careful because feelings can change. I saw this happen to some thoughties on the on the Indian Reserve. Who said that? He dropped 36 points on dude's head after stealing his girl. The situation had everybody on Twitter How talking about she? it. So it's safe to say, since everybody was clowning Ben, he ain't ever hopping on a Kardashian or social media again. But Book and Ben's beef only involved the court and the bedroom. Two other players' beef only. ended up in the studio. Sometimes having the best season of your career isn't a good thing. Just ask Marvin Bagley. Because he played so well during his rookie year, many predicted he was set to become one of the league's biggest stars. But even though he was getting hella attention, none of it got to his head. Until he landed an opportunity to have the interview of a lifetime in front of millions on ESPN's first take. It was here. Marvin ignited a beef with one of the NBA's best players. Because once he started being asked about his rap career, he took things to the extreme. But who Man. is the best MC in the NBA? Man, me. No. So if Damian Lillard would accept that battle, would you do it here on first take? Man, we, whatever, Damian whatever, Lillard man. I'm, I'm with whatever. Dude really said all of that. He had to be off the Henny. How you gonna be on live TV treating Damian Lillard, I mean Dame Dalla, like he's only worth a penny? Just take a look at Dame on YouTube. You can see he's literally got songs with millions of views. I mean, I mean, that's not that. Have you looked up Lonzo Ball? There's no way I mean, he's about to let rap. a young and come for his neck with that type of disrespect. And right after Dame heard the news, he responded to Marvin saying, shoot. It only took Marvin a few hours. He dropped a song called No Debate with him and Dame in the cover art. But see, the lyrics of the song had nothing to even do with the beef. So it seemed like Marvin already had the song done before his interview and only claimed to be the NBA's best rapper Man, along with calling out Dame rap like as this. a publicity stunt to promote his music. But Dame wasn't having it. And within just a few hours, he let Marvin know he might be a king of sack. Dude, this is why you're never gonna win a damn ring, man. A diss track. You think Michael this Jordan be out here rapping like this? Man. Amateur bars, man. Look, I'm really solid, like I say. So why you come for me? This isn't even your own beat. In both careers, moving comfortably. You ain't established in the league for one. I swear I heard Los Polos rap on surface. this. Me deep in the game, and you barely scratching the surface. Now at this point, I thought Marvin was done. Dame shit on both of his careers in one. I mean, even the album art was clowning Marvin. So not only did everybody on Twitter have something to say hey, about donkey. this, Miles Bridges, an NBA rapper himself, was telling Dame to chill. Did and he Joe hit? Budden was he? claimed that this beef was over. But come on now, nobody cares what this dude says, especially not Marvin. So even though he knew that no matter what anybody said, he was still a king, he hopped on the mic one more time oh, and dropped some heat. <laughs> I'm that man, or that mean, whatever you 
won't, nigga, I'm not clean. You whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell does that even mean? How are you gonna come at the Dame Dalla and say something stupid like that? Marvin must have been starving for attention. I mean, dude does play for the king, so there ain't much excitement in basketball. Oh, it explains why he took this situation to the extreme. But see, it didn't matter oh. what he did. Cause Dame's known to take shots and not pump fake. That's why he went back to back. Can you just play basketball, dude? I hope the king learned his lesson. It's a bad investment. I never crack in the moment. You made a bad assessment. God, Little boys so get excited and make a tragic exit. I had respect for the movement, but you were sadly desperate. In my lane, why don't you just play basketball? If you're that tall and you don't even ball. You, oh my god, Dame really did Marvin like the thunder. Wave bye bye, tweeted out I'm done after finish my album, then dropped the mic. But speaking Thank of you. NBA rappers, two players started beefing over NBA young boy? Once the Magic selected Paolo Bancaro with the number one pick, his hype went to an all time high and everybody wanted to see him play. So he was instantly invited to one of the biggest summer league games with other NBA players. At first, Paolo thought it would be a great opportunity especially because he had the chance to share the court with a player who not only became an NBA all-star, but grew up playing basketball with Paolo, DeJounte Murray. So the game should have been a lighthearted matchup, but after certain words were exchanged, things turned personal. Whoa. During their matchup, both Paolo and DeJounte took over. At first, DeJounte got a steal and started talking all tough. Then right after, Paolo got an and one, which really fired things up. So on the very next play, DeJounte took things to a whole new level. Oh! Oh! oh yo! Pam, with Paolo on him, now he can ah! fake him out. I've never seen that before. Threw him into a dunk contest. Oh, DeJounte that's even dirty. called dude a little ass boy and threw the ball at him like he was ah! nothing. So after that, they kept going in. You gotta fight. Now with you gotta all throw that hands. going down, of course the beef didn't stay in the gym. Grandma, First, what a grandma the watching! The matchup ended up all grandma. over ESPN. But eventually, things got even crazier on the ground. Paulo called DeJounte out for unfollowing him and clowned him for not guarding up and needing to send double teams. Then, DeJounte replied, talking about how Paulo tried flexing his number one pick status on him. <laughs> He's rocked with Paolo ever since they were kids growing up in Seattle. He even made one more disrespectful post, and in the oh caption, boy. he admitted it was disrespectful. But Paolo put an end to the online beef, claiming DeJounte was just acting for the narrative. So when the boys matched up for the first time on an NBA court, fans anticipated who'd pull the trigger first. But both guys let their game do the talking. DeJounte okay. dropped 20, Paolo dropped 20, and it turned out. After the game, Paolo let us know the real reason DeJounte even started talking trash. At that pickup game, Paolo told him, Young boy is better than young thug. <laughs> and apparently he just snapped. Like what? He really got upset over that. But at least their hate towards each other's only been going on for a few months. How about the NBA players who've had beef for a decade? Right before these two stars joined the NBA. Joel Embiid had to show the world who the better pick was. Oh, shoot. Oh, Joel looks so young. Joel Embiid turned Marcus Smart into Marcus Dumb. Is Embiid Marcus made smart? sure Smart could never forget this play by turning this moment into his first ever Instagram post. But just the dunk wasn't enough. <laughs> Embiid even threw shade at him with the caption saying, not very smart to jump on that one. We so all from Africa. Obviously, trolling someone's name wasn't gonna go well. And that started a beef that followed them into the NBA. As soon as they came face to face in a heated playoff matchup, Embiid tried making smart, not able to have kids. What? Oh, he and kicked him in the donkey dick. Embiid's a center. Oh! Man loves touching ah! curves. But I mean, that's gotta be a foul, right? Smart couldn't even stand up. Well, Smart was never gonna forget this. But at this point, things were getting personal. And the next time they saw each other, the hate went to another level. Oh, yo! Oh, <laughs> Marcus, Marcus shoved him! And Embiid, Embiid's going right back at him. The That's Sixers so silly. Keeping Embiid away. That was a bit of a flop on Joel, man. There's no way Marcus way, shoved him that he got far. got thrown to the ground like he was nothing. But it not only cost Smart the game, it even cost him 50 bands. And That's he got nothing, thrown dude. out of the arena. So cause That's that nothing. shove cost Smart a check, he sent a message at Embiid's neck that he wasn't playing around. But it was clear neither of them were over this beef, cause opening night turned into another fight. Tatum doesn't go. Oh. And a foul call. Oh! Smart and Embiid get into it a bit. Embiid slips down. Brown steps in. 
Yo, they oh, got to let him fight God. like in hockey, they man. damn, you're trying to rip dude's arm off. They would've this got these the over NBA. with by now. Not the UFC. You can't just be doing all that. But even though the game continued after things calmed down, during post-game interviews, Smart let us know that this beef will never end. I stopped play, my arm's still stuck in there and he tries to break it. And then I'm the only one that gets attacked, so, you know, I could've cracked his head open, but I didn't. Damn. Smart would really crack his head. I don't know, man. I think I got Joel in that fight. Arm? And Beat's gotta be careful. I don't know. Some Joel's a fake turn dude. Into life threatening injuries, career ruining scandals, and even balls to the face. Cool. But real quick, before we get to those, since we're on the topic balls. of balls, is this a man's thank you, man's I called it. I've, for sponsoring I've had one of these ads before. T himself the award, because in front of millions, he made it seem like Harden was ass. I'm between Kim by Trey Young. Wait, you don't, but want, I gotta the, go. you don't want the dribbler? <laughs> <laughs> I want somebody that's gonna pass the ball. That's why I like. <laughs> Hold on. I forgot about Someone that. who would pass the ball? Wasn't he averaging more assists per game than who Giannis picked? Even Harden was confused. Giannis and Takupo makes a joke on the air about, I want to take someone who can pass. I'm taking Kemba Walker instead of James Harden. I have more assists than him, I think. So I don't, see, I, don't, I don't see what the joke is. I just know none of them can mess with me. I think it's your work ethic. So yeah, I think that's what it is. Just because Giannis was capping, I already knew there'd be some action. And with them being on separate teams in the All-Star game, the situation got even more heated. Because Giannis caught Harden with an elbow to the jaw. Ooh. Then after, Giannis clowned Harden even more. First, we were just trying to, you know, find whoever James Harden was guarding. That's who we thought we we're going to have the opportunity to score on. Damn, Giannis. <laughs> you could clown Harden's D like that. Wow. Oh, wait. So did we. Wait. Wrong D. What? Things between these two were escalating, and fans expected the beef to continue. So as the season went on, both players kept going off. And Harden decided to throw shade one more time. You know, but I wish I could just run, run, and with seven feet and run and just dump. Like, that takes no skill at all. <laughs> but even though oh, Harden man, said all of that, Giannis took right, his game salty. to a whole new level. And not only did Giannis end up winning the MVP race, he ended things with balls to the face. That's how when he hit Harden in the head. But that was right, intentional. at least that Look beef only cost Harden some mouth. Another beef turned into a $140 million scandal. See... Fame is not the only thing that got to Jordan Poole's head. Because during a Warriors practice, once he started talking crazy towards one of his teammates, a well-known NBA oh, thug, here it comes. Draymond Green, Draymond wasn't about to let some kid son him. So he walked over to Poole, got in his grill, and put that little baby to sleep. Oh, oh! But that few seconds became the biggest controversy in sports. He, he died This from is the that, biggest right? crisis that we've ever had. It turned out. Poole didn't just call Draymond Captain Greybeard or say he looked like the donkey from Shrek. Poole called him a walking triple single. Ooh! Yeah, honestly, it was only a matter of time before these two would have beef. Because of what Draymond's first impression was of Poole. Jordan came in the camp talking shit to everybody, and I remember one day, uh, him and Glenn Robinson the third, they got into it. All these guys are coming to me like, tell them to shut up. This young ass always got something to say. So cuz Poole's been known to beef with teammates, fans had Draymond's back and what? literally turned Poole into a meme Is that in by 2K? customizing his 2K character with a black eye. I gotta find things that. Things were getting out of hand. But with the Warriors wanting to hurry up and move on so they could focus on another championship run, they tried sweeping the situation under the rug by handling the punishments without the league getting involved. And the Warriors owner, told the world. He was fine to the maximum, and he took some time away from the team, and he's obviously got some repair work to do. What's we all know maximum? that. He knows that. Now, many people began speculating that Draymond's punishment should have been much higher than any fine, or that the league should have done some investigating around the situation on a criminal level. But out of nowhere, criminal. Draymond apologized, right, and news broke that the Warriors gave Poole a bigger bag than most NBA All-Stars. A four-year, $140 million contract. Sheesh. So the situation's been quiet ever since since. But there is one warrior whose hate for another player fueled him to win a championship. During a regular season matchup between two of the NBA's top teams, the Warriors and Grizzlies both had stars sitting out, and this still became one of the most entertaining beginnings to a rivalry ever. During the game, Klay Thompson sat on the bench and was forced to watch the Grizzlies go crazy, from and ones to a dunk of the year. Oh! The Grizzlies were hooping and literally dubbed the dubs by over a dub. 
But after the game, one Grizzly made the biggest mistake of his life. What'd he do? Jaron Jackson Jr. whipped out his Twitter fingers and made a mockery of the Warriors slogan. Nah. He claimed that the Grizzlies were the ones with strength in numbers. Yo, Triple J, what? thought twice before mocking a dynasty, because little did he know, they were about to come face to face in the NBA playoffs. And because things weren't just one game, uh -oh. there were no Steph Curry excuses. Off. But that's when the Warriors taught the Grizzlies to watch what they say. Uh -oh. Not only did they beat them four to two and eventually move on to win an NBA championship, it turned out that the Warriors' entire motivation came from the regular season matchup with the Grizzlies and especially Jaron Jackson's tweet. But that wasn't the only secret that got revealed after the championship celebration when Clay got disrespectful. There was this one player on the Grizzlies who tweeted strength in numbers after they beat us in the regular season and it pissed me off so much. I can't wait to retweet that thing. Freaking <laughs> that, I had to watch that. I'm just like, this freaking clown. Clay went in. Yo. It's just lucky talking crazy like that. Is he in the season, man? Why career, not? It's a glass like day school. James Beef. The crazy thing is, the player who started hating on LeBron wasn't even on the court tonight. He just watched LeBron and the Cavs smack the Knicks by over 30 points troll them on the sidelines and become the headline of every sports Yo, show. Yo, what are you doing, bottom so, flip? itching for attention. Ennis Kanter came out of the shadows calling him out. He said, with LeBron, it was weird. I remember watching the Cavs blowing out the Knicks at Madison Square Garden, and they started playing the bottle flip game. I was like, this is disrespectful, man. This is messed up. To be honest, it seemed kind of weird that a dude not on the Knicks was defending the Knicks. But ironically, during the very next free agency, Kanner signed with their team. Everybody wondered if LeBron had heard Kanner's criticism, but whether he did or not, he randomly started publicly criticizing the Knicks. The, the Knicks pass on, the, on a really good one, and Dallas got the, the diamond in the rough. This didn't seem like much, but randomly saying what the Knicks woulda, coulda, shoulda done didn't sit well with Kanner's ego. So he got involved and quoted the tweet saying, nah, we love what we got. Everybody was waiting on LeBron's response. But once again, he took the high road. Till his very next matchup with the Knicks, he caught an alley-oop and trolled the team again until all hell broke loose. I wish they could see that fight. Kanner was pissed that LeBron was not only acting like he was a king, but also trying to punk the younger and smaller Frank Nedelikina. The player LeBron randomly said the Knicks shouldn't have drafted. So during post-game interviews, Kanner got disrespectful. And you didn't come to my house playing that water bottle flip game again. I don't care who you are, King, Queen, Princess, whatever you are. You know what? We're going to fight. Rock. And, and nobody out there going to punk us. Now, I respect we Kanner for trying to make it seem like he's tough. But ain't no way he was about to fight anybody, man. And LeBron knew it. So he trolled Kanner right back. You can call yourself a king, queen, princess, but you're not going to punk us. Well, I'm the king, my wife is the queen, and my daughter is the princess. So we got all three covered. Now, after LeBron let Kanner know everybody's role in the what? kingdom, nobody's fingers itch for an Instagram post more than him. Look at this so little LeBron crackhead. In the situation Look at this little kid. More, telling the world that he's the king of New York and that Madison Square Garden's his favorite playground, basically saying the Knicks are his kids. And you'd think the trolling would stop there. But LeBron's not just a basketball king, he's also the petty king. So the next time he yeah, matched against Dick Kanner for that too. the Knicks, he debuted some new drip, I'm exclusive king. I'm King shoes. And these were a direct message at Ennis Kanner. But not only did these kicks make every headline, they even had LeBron's biggest fan, Shannon Sharp, calling out Ennis Kanner on live TV. He was trolling Ennis Kanner because Ennis Kanner pretended like he wanted to be tough. So LeBron James said, I just want you to know, Kanter. Yeah who I am, mm. what I am. Mm. He had black shoes on and big old white leather. Big white leather. <laughs> big old black white leather. Yeah. Now, they had a point. I mean, LeBron's a king and Kanner's ass. But to be honest, it seemed like Kanner just loved the attention. Because when he showed up to his own interview to talk about his beef with LeBron in the shoes, at first, he made a joke out of the situation. This is the shoe I hate it. <laughs> I hope he burns these shoes. But all the talk about shoes had Kanner secretly planning something for the next time they saw each other. Uh oh. And right when Kanner walked on the court, his shoes had everybody talking. 
Dennis Cantor has spoken out on human rights issues in China for quite some time. And yesterday on social media, Cantor tweeted photos of the shoes he's wearing tonight, which attack LeBron James's lifetime partnership with Nike. What was on Cantor's feet right became about the that. biggest story of his LeBron's career. LeBron's a damn communist. Issues called out LeBron get, yeah, yeah. and <laughs> Nike, claiming they both supported no, China what? by choosing money over happen? more. Nobody had ever come at LeBron so hard Yo, or so many times. I've never times. even heard of this. So after the matchup, of course he was asked about it. No, I think if you know me, I don't really give too many people my energy. He's definitely not someone I will give my energy to. LeBron. But even though LeBron wasn't going to give Canner any energy, the NBA was. Turns out, just for Canner's custom shoes that protested Yo. against him, Nike, and China, he wasn't only traded to the Rockets and instantly cut. Since then, Canner hasn't gotten a single contract offer from any team. Dude, that's NBA too. NBA is just as bad. NBA. So his beef with LeBron was career ruined, Crazy. which reminds me of Russell Westbrook's beef that turned his entire life into a meme. The beef between Westbrook and Patrick Beverly was born from a life-changing moment. Here, this play. And Westbrook hobbling away. Oh yeah, I remember this. Beverly just going for that steal for the changed Westbrook's life forever. Because not only did it force Westbrook out of the game and out of the playoffs, Beverly tore Westbrook's meniscus so badly, it required three surgeries to repair. Have Beverly this was the a type of injury dude. that takes months to heal. How so the entire totally... time that Westbrook rehabbed, all he could think about was the With next time he saw Beverly, it was on site. And Beverly felt no need to show any sympathy. But that was just the beginning of the chaos. Their but beef never went away. Even when Beverly got traded, he still had a target on his back when Big Daddy Westbrook came to town. <laughs> and that's when Westbrook slapped him with a brand new taunt. That's prime Westbrook. Ah! <laughs> Just look at him. Dude's out here rocking the baby at a grown ass man. But Beverly took that personally. And later in the game, he tried to ruin Westbrook's life again. Oh my God. Oh, there's no way Beverly's doing that on accident. Dude's really out here trying to ruin careers by dolphin diving like a sweaty cod kid. Of course this made the two get into a debate. But after the game, Westbrook said something that made nobody look at Beverly the same. Pat Bev trick y'all, man, like you play defense. He don't guard nobody, man. Just running around doing nothing. <laughs> now, the way Westbrook talked about Beverly didn't seem like much. But clowning another man's D can really ruin a reputation. And from that interview on, Pause. no players looked at Beverly as somebody who was more than a meme. And he even admitted that what Westbrook said began ruining his career. <laughs> you, you, you know, people looked at me different. People around the NBA, coaches, players. After that, people were just taking the ball, just going at me. I'm like, what the f Like, all because of what one person said. Now, at this point, Beverly had to do something to save his reputation. And well, what better way than using Westbrook's downfall to his advantage? Because once Westbrook got traded to the Lakers, nobody was more ready to catch Westbrook slipping than Beverly. He watched Westbrook have the worst season of his career. And not only did Beverly turn Westbrook's own words against him, the next time they played each other, Beverly trolled Westbrook harder than ever. When Beverly scored a layup, he actually walked down court doing Westbrook's oh rock a baby Lord. taunt at him yeah, while okay. staring him in the oh eyes. My God. Later that quarter, Beverly got a steal on Westbrook and walked down court saying, he's trash. Then in the fourth quarter, when Westbrook pulled out one of his signature moves, an air ball, oh, Beverly no. and his teammates let the ref know just how off that shot the was. Signature move. Get a timeout. Oh. So just when you think things can't make the hate for each other any worse, the Lakers felt the right move was <laughs> signing true. Beverly to make them teammates. So I'm excited to see how the hate for each other plays out. Yeah, how's that I going? Mean, the only thing crazier than that is thinking you're better than the greatest player in the world. Because oh. John Morant's been humiliating the entire NBA. But what he's doing against today's players got to his head a little too much. Jeez, now that he's jump. having his best season ever, out of nowhere, he called out the GOAT. No, but not. if you could have talked to Michael Jordan, what would you have said? I would like to no play against him. This time you're not saying, I would have cooked a... I would have cooked him too. Hold up. You'd cook Jordan? <sighs> Maybe you cook for Jordan, but, <laughs> but you aren't cooking Jordan. <laughs> Once Ja said that about Black Jesus, oh. of course it went viral and on, every ja. sports show was talking about these days? But uh, nobody agreed with Ja. Of course sports not. Sports analysts didn't. No way, no how would Ja Morant have cooked Michael Jordan. Nah. NBA legends who actually played against Jordan didn't. 
Mike is Mike, man. The best player ever, man, I ever played. Yeah, all these kids talk a lot of shit, Ja. Hey, man, stop that shit. You ain't want them problems, bro. <laughs> Even another star in today's <laughs> NBA, Zach Levine, was willing to bet $250 million on a 1v1 between the two. I, that's a, I wouldn't bet that much money on anything. But the best response to Ja came from Jordan himself. No. <laughs> but even though Jordan literally laughed at dude, Ja just had to say one more thing to piss everybody off. He said if you put Michael Jordan in today's game, oh, no, it's just he's another dumb superstar. Oh, but realistically, stop. this is a beef I don't think can ever end. Besides, Ja needs to spend time dubbing players of this generation so he can actually create a legacy. The only award dude has is Rookie of the Year. He needs some MVPs and championships yeah, ben Simmons before got a rookie Grandpa year too. Jordan even yeah, considers career, getting on a court and risking his legacy because there's a lot of players in today's NBA that Oof. risk their legacies on a nightly basis. And I'm water. not going to lie to you. I rank them. I got players oh, airballing lay. Awesome. NBA players who hate each other. Yeah, this was good. This was a long video too. A whole bunch of rivalries. I had no idea that was going on. And yeah, so what's going on with Patrick and Russell? Are they... Are they working together? I mean, based on the record, it looks like they're not, but I don't know. Let me know. Guys, if you got a video you'd like for me to watch or react to, you can tweet me at Troyden under the hashtag TroydenReacts. Thank you for watching, and kids, don't hate each other.